Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a quick look at a brand new 2023 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CDL. This is a destination trailer with a loft. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV, and then we will close it up at the end and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are up inside the brand new 2023 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CDL destination trailer here. As you've seen on the floor plan that was up there a second ago, this is a front living room, rear bedroom with a loft. So we're going to start up front here and then we'll kind of work our way around. So starting on the front nose area of the RV, you have very large windows up here. This particular unit was ordered with the optional dual pane safety glass tinted windows. Standard is single pane safety glass tinted windows. So if you want that extra layer of glass, giving you some dead air space in between, if you're more of a extended stay customer or full-time type of customer, consider doing the dual pane windows. Nice feature to have on the RV. Now, blind-wise, up here in this area, they're currently using the day-night roller shades for privacy. The sofa here is part of the Thomas Paine collection, and this is a completely freestanding sofa. So you could take this out, throw it away, put in whatever you want if you wanted to do so. However, it's a pretty nice sofa, and this sofa will flip out and make into a large bed. So you could sleep a couple extra adults up here fairly comfortably if you wanted to. Now kind of looking up top here, we have a 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version. But they also have a turbo exhaust fan that is a 12 volt version roof vent up there. That thing moves a lot of air. So if you're cooking in here or, you know, it's a nice fall or spring day and it's not real hot outside and you just want to move some air, open up your windows, that thing will pull through a lot of fresh air. AC up here, they're currently using a Coleman ducted AC. So you can see one of them right there, some duct working coming out the roof here as well. There's a second AC that's back a little further, you'll see as we spin around. Also up there, you can see the Bluetooth speaker that they put in the roof. Um, so you could connect your phone or something to that to play some music through. Over here, we have a power theater seat. This again, freestanding, so it could be replaced at any time if you wanted to. But again, fairly comfortable, part of that Thomas Paine collection. It is power, kicks back, reclines pretty nicely. You have USB charger port in each of the outer arms there, cup holders, and some storage in the middle. Huge windows overlooking the door side or awning side of your RV. Now here, looking at your entertainment area. So you have electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. I currently have the light portion going, but you can also turn on the heat to help knock the chill off in the RV. There's a little bit of shelf space below the TV area right there. The TV does have a little strap on it for travel purposes. There's a little travel latch here as well that keeps this closed when you are traveling if you are going to travel with the RV and it opens up and there's a large pantry area back here or just storage whatever you want to use it for there's some storage space little cubbies on the back of the swinging door part here these are probably I don't know about an inch deep inch and a half deep so that might make a good little spice rack holder or something there's an electric outlet there there is the TV antenna booster button along with your satellite cable hookups if you wanted to do satellite or cable wherever you're located. Another electric outlet down here. And then you have little access panels down there for some maintenance stuff. 
on the back of the swing door, there is an electric outlet for your fireplace, one for the TV, and one there not being used. So if you needed to plug in a Blu-ray player or cable or satellite box or something and wanted that box to be outside of this area, you could plug it in and maybe you know, fasten it to that shelf area there or something. Now when it closes like that, it does have a pretty powerful magnet that latches it into place. But pretty cool little setup. Now going into the kitchen area here. So we have on this side some USB charger ports. And down below there is a central vac area. There's some hoses that come with it and plugs into the side so you could do some vacuuming. On the side here, you have a fold up and down little shelf or extension area here. This is pretty cool. That's new for 2023 as well. Also, cabinet colors, floor colors, some of the wall boards. Whole lot of changes for 2023 versus the older 2022 models. High-rise spring sprayer faucet. You have a double bowl undermount stainless sink. Some really nice solid surface countertops. These are kind of like a stone material. Lots of storage underneath of here. Four drawers. And then you can also see underneath of there where the central vac is underneath that island that you could change out your bag and stuff. Nice hang down pendant lighting up here. Dinette-wise, you have a freestanding table and four chairs. The table comes screwed down from the factory for travel purposes, but a lot of people unscrew it when they do um, get it to their location. Now, if you do remount it, make sure you right, use the right size screws because when you screw it down, you're technically screwing into the slide floor, and if you use too long of a screw, you'll tear up your floor when you run it in. There's an electric outlet also on the wall underneath of there as well. USB charger ports and light switches here on the wall. And again, day-night roller shades on these windows. Over here, you do have little pull-out trash cans. You got two trash cans down here. There's a drawer, actually two drawers there, and then you have some storage as well. Decent amount of extra counter space over here. Great place for, say, coffee pots, toasters, you know, a little coffee bar, whatever you want to do. They also put the King Wi-Fi Connect over here as well. And you can kind of see there in a the little picture that popped up some information about that. But it comes with a little router and pre-wired where you could put a King Wi-Fi antenna on there if you wanted. Some more overhead storage here. Then over on this side, you have your electric box with the breakers and fuses, little coat closet here, and then a control panel. We'll go over this when we come back in to close up the slides and stuff for you. Refrigerator-wise, they're currently using a large Insignia refrigerator. This is a 110-volt residential-style refrigerator. It has an ice maker built in as well. Freezer on bottom, fridge on top. You also have some storage up above there. Over here, you have your large microwave and quite a bit of storage around the microwave and above the microwave also. Four burner gas stove top and a drawer on each side as well. Nice backsplash, some electric outlets back there also. And looking down below here, you have quite a bit of storage space on each side of the oven. There's even a shelf in that storage space on each side. And a huge oven. They're using the Insignia oven. It's one of the biggest ovens currently in the RV market. Again, gas oven. Electric outlet on the side here.
big sliding glass door. This again is also a dual pane safety glass door as well. Tented window. There is a like a pleated blind thing that comes with it. They don't install that. Uh, the actual individual blind pleats. You do have all the hangers and stuff up there. But they leave that up to the customer to put on if they do want to put it on there. If not, get your own style. Over here, there is controls for your AC and your furnace setup here. RV Comfort and light switch. The turbo exhaust fan controls also. And then you do have two temperature sensors for the air conditioners here. I did forget to mention you do have a little bit of space on the top of the cabinets to store things. And then you also have this pretty cool little loft area up here. We're going to head over there after we check out the bathroom. So bathroom area here. The bathroom has a one-piece molded fiberglass shower with a sit-down seat. Sliding glass doors. Does have a pretty nice shower head area as well. Pretty cool little setup there. Multi-sprayer. Now over here there is a vent fan that blows out or sucks out the moisture out the side of the RV. You have some little robe hooks here. There is also some storage for your linens and stuff. That's probably about a foot deep. Porcelain foot flush toilet. There is storage underneath your sink area. You have a solid surface sink as well. Actual wood medicine cabinet. And it has a sliding pocket door for store or for privacy. So pretty cool little setup. Back here, going on down the hallway a little more, on the right we have our stairs. These are built into the RV, and this right here just kind of takes you up to a small loft on the right, which you've seen when we were down there. There is also another turbo exhaust fan up here as well. Electric outlet up here also. Another little grab handle. And then your large loft is actually over here. So there's another turbo exhaust fan over here. Three windows up here. There's TV and cable outlet and stuff over there as well. Electric outlet and USB charger ports in the middle. Now, kind of spinning around here in the picture that's popping up, you can see the little storage cubby areas and some drawer space, cabinet space, all right there. So the kids do have a decent amount of space up there to store some stuff. And there's even in that one little cubby up there a hanging rod to hang things on. Now moving back a little bit further, we step down into the master bedroom. So they're currently using a camper king bed. And I say camper king because king beds and campers are not the same exact size typically as what you find in a home. They're usually a few inches narrower. Most of them are typically around the 80 inch length but they're usually anywhere from 66 to 70 to 72 inches wide, depending on the brand. This particular one is currently using a 72 inch wide version. You have a little shelf space above your windows there. Those windows do open. USB charger ports and electric outlets on each side. So for some of you that are using like CPAP machines and stuff, Got a little shelf space to stick it on, plug it in over there, so you should be good. Bed again raises up, so there is some storage underneath of there. Now over here on the left, we have the stackable washer dryer option that was ordered on this. It's just a closet 
if you don't do the stackable washer dryer. So you'll still have this little sliding door here, but then you would just have an open hole closet right there. But that is what it looks like with the stackable washer dryer. And typically in most of the RVs, you'll find these Splendide washer dryers. It's a pretty popular RV brand when they do offer a washer dryer. Not always Splendide, but most RV manufacturers use that brand when they do offer it. Sliding doors here. Now there is the electric switch right there for your residential water heater. You'll see that actually when we get outside. But you have again hanging closet here. There's a light in here as well. Your little dresser over here, you have four fairly large drawers and a top that lifts up with some hidden storage as well. These two large windows here also open. They currently use night roller shades in the bedroom area. TV back here. And then there's also that little black box on the back wall there is a optional electric heater. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Again, knocking the chill off back here without having to use the standard propane furnace. Entry exit door here to get you in and out of the RV. It is a little bit wider than some doors. You're roughly about 32 inches wide. Most RVs are typically 28 to 30. This one was also ordered with the optional uh, Rebon carpet padding back here as well. So you don't have to do this carpet. You can do just linoleum back here if you prefer. And they will actually option carpet into the living room area if you prefer as well. On the slide, I forgot to mention when we were up here earlier, it has that woven material. Instead of carpet, it's kind of a woven material they use in like pontoon boats and stuff. But overall, really nice, higher quality destination trailer. Cedar Creek Cottage is currently, I think, one of the highest, if not the highest, destination trailer quality-wise on the market. Most of them are wood frame constructed, metal siding, and optional hung fiberglass sided kind of scenario. Here, this is actually a higher gloss fiberglass, aluminum stud, roof, wall, and floors. Um, you have plywood tongue and groove instead of OSB boards. Just overall, a lot of really nice quality things going into the interior and construction of the RV. Now that doesn't mean the other ones are bad, it just means this one usually costs more. All right, we're gonna head outside. I want to show you around the outside and then we're gonna come back in and close this thing up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we're back on the outside of the brand new 2023 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CDL. We're gonna start here on the door side of the RV and kind of spin our way around. So first things up, we have a high gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior with kind of a lower dark gray metal skirting. This is a hung sidewall, aluminum cage construction. So you have aluminum studs in your walls, your floor, and your roof, where a lot of brands are wood constructed in the destination series. So nice upgrade on their construction over some of their competition. You have deep tent safety glass windows, standard on the RV, single pane, or you can opt in for dual pane deep tent safety glass windows. Some dealers stock them with single, some stock them with dual. So when you are ordering, make sure you get what you want. Obviously dual pane windows do cost more. Stepping on back here to the middle section, we have our main entry area. And the unit comes standard with detachable more ride entry step. This step comes off. Most people tend to build decks around these and don't even use them. But if you're not gonna do that, then you have the more ride step to use. But it detaches. 
dual pane safety glass sliding glass entry door as well again tented window large folding entry handle to help you get in and out of the rv if you are going to use the steps the model number for the product is usually located around the main entry door so if you're out looking at a dealer's lot and see something you like look around the main entry door to notify your salesperson of what you liked the unit is dual axle it has steel wheels and easy lube hubs and drum brakes never adjust brakes by dexter also they are basically self-adjusting electric outlet and cable outlet here in case you wanted to put a tv here looking up you have the power awning led light strip built in close to the body of the rv adjustable arms for tilting for water runoff and you also have a manual override in the front arm head in case of an electronic failure they also do a porch light up there as well a lot of brands only do a porch light or the led strip in the awning it's rare to see both your back entry door here takes you into the bedroom you've seen that we were in there does the old school hover style step back here again if you build a deck you're not really going to use that on around to the back side here traditional flat back rear end nothing really back here on the rear side slide out area here this is your bed slide that you've seen when we we're inside we'll close that up again when we get back inside uh, it comes standard basically looks like this but they do also offer an option for slide out awning covers to go over top of those rooms so if you're not going to build any type of structure or anything over top of it which some customers do as well um, it is a nice thing to possibly add slide out awning covers to the rooms just to help shade the rooms repels a lot of water leaves twigs debris things like that going on around here you can see just down behind the axles here is your main dump area and two of your dump handles are located right up here they're the cable style handles so the gate valves and stuff are actually up inside the enclosed underbelly but you can pull the handles out here there will be another one under the slide you'll see when we get up a little further. This one was ordered with the washer dryer feature you've seen when we were inside. So that little black square right there is the dryer vent. Over here we have another vent up top and that is the vent fan area for the bathroom. So when you turn on that vent fan in the bathroom, it kind of blows it out the side. Now in here, we do have the area under the steps inside. So here is your residential water heater. This is roughly, I think it's a 20 gallon water heater if I remember right. It has a bypass system and drain valve system on it as well. So for winterization, you can drain it out and bypass it to run antifreeze through the system. This over here is a little check valve for the black tank flush. So when you do hook up your hose, it kind of flows through this check valve system and down into the tank. That's what that is. And then your hydraulic pump for your slide system. Manually override it here. You have individual on off valves right here for basically shutting off the fluid flow. So if you want to run just one of the rooms out, you can and leave the other ones closed by shutting them off. Just in front of that door, we have another little cubby area here, and this is where your water pump is located. This is just behind the bathtub or shower area, and this right here is the water pump, which does have a little screen filter on it, and it also has a winterizing pump kit on it to help you with winterization. Black tank flush, fresh water connection, and city water connection are right there. Fresh water is basically going to fill your portable tank if you need to use that. City water is what you hook to just to have free flowing water throughout the RV. If you go to a campground or your permanent site has that. 
cable and satellite inlets above the running light there. Now below the running light there is your detachable 50 amp power cord. You can see it kind of stretched all the way out over there. It's probably about, I'd say, close to 30 feet long, 25, 30 feet long roughly. Again, furnace exhausting out right here. Now looking down below here, you can see a, another grab handle underneath it here. And that grab handle is your galley tank or basically kitchen sink tank. And you're also seeing back there the fresh water tank drain as well. Kind of looking down the whole side here. On the side of the slide there, on that big slide, you have your stove exhaust vent out up there. Now just down underneath the here, you can also see the ice maker on off valve and a drain valve as well right underneath the here. So when you first get your RV, typically this is turned off, especially if it's winter time. You got to go underneath there and pull that valve. Now on the front corner right here, you have some very important informational stickers. I want to pop these up for you here real quick. The very first one popping up is your main production data sticker. This has the VIN number, axle sizes, uh, production date, but most importantly on this sticker, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to. Axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined do not exceed that number. Next is your cargo carrying capacity sticker, basically telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed the gross weight on the first sticker. Next is the unloaded vehicle weight sticker, which basically tells you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line, and it also has the length on it. And last but not least, tire sticker here, basically telling you tire size, but most importantly, cold tire pressure. Very, very important if you're moving these things around to check your air pressure and your tires to make sure they're inflated properly. The tires can only hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. If you let that drop too low, the tires will blow out easier. These are, again, destination trailers. They're really meant to take somewhere and park it permanently, kind of leave it there. Not really a weekend move around type of camper, but some people do that with these. And if you are the customer that does that type of stuff, make sure that you do keep up with the maintenance of your tires. Now on the front side here, it has a heavy duty fiberglass front cap multiple windows you've seen as we were inside when it ships to the dealer from the factory it does have kind of protective coating over the front of it down here is a gas line hookup for like a portable grill now also looking underneath it here you can see this hitch actually is detachable it has a few different places where you can unbolt it and remove it if you need to some customers like to do that because their campground has length restrictions and they can save a couple feet by detaching the hitch on the front and just blocking the RV. A lot of people tend to block these destination trailers and strap them down. There's two 30 pound propane tanks on the front of here. And if you do undo the hitch section here and detach it you would have to set those bottles somewhere kind of relocate that setup two and five sixteenths hitch ball heavy duty safety chains manual crank jack and then there's room back here for one or possibly two batteries depending on the size of the battery it comes with zero batteries from the rv maker however if you purchase from couches rv nation it does come with at least one if you wanted a second one Talk with your salesperson about that. If you are going to be permanently setting this up somewhere and plugging it in, batteries aren't really that important to you. But if you are going to be boondock style camping or something like that, having a couple really good batteries is definitely a nice benefit. Now here's real quick a picture of the roof. So you can see up here on the roof you have some things as far as like plumbing stack vents, air conditioners, TV antennas, attic vents, you know, roof vents, things like that. You do have to get up here from time to time and inspect your seams and your seals on your roof. 
things around the cap edging, all of those vents up there, running down your gutter tracks, around your windows. Very important to maintain that stuff to keep water out of your RV so you don't end up with damage. Overall, a lot of really, really nice features. The Cedar Creek Cottage is one of the highest quality line destination trailers on the market, if not the highest right now. Um, again, upgraded fiberglass, upgraded aluminum stud construction, a lot of upgraded features in the appliances and construction of the RV. There are many different types of destination trailers out there, but this is definitely one of the top on the market right now. All right, we're going to head back inside. I want to close this up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back up inside the brand new 2023 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CDL here. And I want to show you what it looks like closed. So when you are actually ready to close this thing up, you do have to come back in here to your control center. And basically this center has things like your slide, uh, slide in and out button here, an override switch to shut them off. And you have your awning in and out button, some light switches, 12 volt tank heaters for cold weather camping, you know, porch light, step light switch kind of scenario, water pump, your monitor panel, ceiling fan switch. But what we're coming in to mess with is going to be this button right here. And when we are ready to bring this in, we're just going to hit the button to bring it in, hit the button to take it out. So I'm going to set the camera down back here because what will happen is the hydraulic slide is going to push the bedroom in first. So let's set this down here so you can kind of get a rough idea what this looks like here. And we'll grab the camera back up and bring in the other slot sections. So again, coming in, we have that bedroom moving first. It's going to come in and basically butt right up against that dresser. So let off the button here so we can pick up our camera again. And when this comes in, it gets really close to your dresser here. Now I can still come back in here through my rear door or the door I just walked through here down the hallway. So I can come back in and do what I need to do. Really kind of get to just about everything back here. Um, not really anything out of whack. Get to my closet, I can get to my washer dryer. I could come back here and sleep if I needed to. Now, when doing these front parts here, you do have to make sure everything is out of the way. Same thing with the back, but very, very important to make sure, you know, this leaf extension thing on the side of the island, for example, is actually down and out of the way. Otherwise, it'll crash right into your dinette table. Make sure your dinette table leaf extension is back. Your sofa's pushed back against the wall far enough so that the slide's not going to catch on anything. Same thing, your drawers and cabinets, all that type of stuff has to be closed up. Now coming on in the rest of the way here, we've got our kitchen slide moving. This is going to come in very, very close to the island. We're going to let off the button there again so you kind of see what this looks like. And you can see very, very close to your sofa. And if you're going to be moving this thing around, you want to make sure that, you know, everything is latched closed properly and fastened down properly. If you're just leaving it sit on your site permanently and you're closing it up for the winter, you're just basically just making sure the floor is clean, things are out of the way, and then close it up. You're not moving it, so nothing should really bounce around and move around. And coming back in the rest of the way, let's get spun around here. This floor kind of tilts upward a little bit. And it 
it's in now and you can see it's pretty snug I'm not really climbing around past there very much now if you do have your chairs kind of pushed back out of the way you could kind of squeeze through here you got a few inches to squeeze through here um, so you could if you really had to get back there but it just takes a few seconds to bump out the rooms if you really truly wanted to open something up to access everything fully but I could still come in here, get to my refrigerator. So if you are one of those traveling people and you want to still travel with a destination trailer like this, I could still come in here and get to my refrigerator. I got to my bedroom. The kids can get to the loft. I can get to the bathroom. So you could still technically come back in here and use the RV closed up if you had to. All right, folks, thanks for taking the time to watch my RV video. Please be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. Thanks again.